In this section, we will talk about various aspects of raster data model. First, we need to distinguish two different types of objects or phenomena that are represented in GIS. First class or first type are continuous fields that can be represented as bivariate function or as trivariate function. Another type are discrete objects or features that are represented as lines, points, or areas, and each of them has some attributes assigned with it. So here are the basic properties of continuous fields and of discrete objects and features. And continuous fields are usually represented as rasters. But there is also vector representation is also possible as thin isolines or points. And we will talk about the vector representation later. Discrete objects are usually represented as vector uh, model, but they can be also represented as raster, as we will show soon. So here is an example of continuous field represented as raster. The first example is probably the most common, and that's the elevation data. The second example is precipitation data draped over elevation data. So typical continuous fields where the values are changing from point to point. Here is discrete phenomena represented as rasters. The first map is land use. The second map is roads with speed limits assigned as a raster value. And here you can see that, for example, for the land use map, for many points, we have the same values. And then they sharply change to a different value as the type of land use changes. So that's the main difference. Let's look at the actual representation. In GIS, usually the raster data have header that describes the actual raster and then matrix of values. These values can be integer, floating point, and so on. And the continu in the conti for the continuous fields, the value is usually assigned to a grid point or you, we usually look at those data as this value assigned to a grid point. For discrete objects, we usually look at this raster value as represented or as assigned to pixel uh, area. So here is a concrete example. Here is our elevation map, and you can see that the values are changing slowly from cell to cell. So that's the continuous field. And you can see in the discrete field, you have the same values repeating over a stretch of the area, and then you have a big jump between two cells where the category changes or the speed limit changes. And then we can have a two-dimensional raster model used for volume representation uh, using multiple surfaces. So essentially you can have a set of two-dimensional raster layers that can represent, for example, soil horizons or geological layers. And they are essentially discrete vertically uh, because you can see that the value, we have the same value for one layer, another value for another layer, then another value for another layer, but they are continuous horizontally. So the values are changing slowly. So this would be a hybrid uh, three-dimensional or volume representation. And then we can have a fully continuous three-dimensional raster model where the values are changing both horizontally and vertically. So here you don't have, a, they are represented by 3D matrix of values and these layers are actually interpolated. They are not represented as separate two-dimensional uh, two dimensional rasters. Now, very important operation for raster data that almost everybody needs to do in their project is changing resolution of raster data when they come from different mapping projects from different sources. 
and different procedures need to be applied to continuous data uh, as compared to, uh, to discrete data, and we will show here why. For example, if you apply nearest neighbor to continuous data, what you get is a discontinuous surface. So you can see you have a lot of steps here. Here, if you use nearest neighbor from 30 meter to 10 meter, and we will show what, this, what we mean by nearest neighbor. If we reinterpolate the map, that means that we calculate the values in, uh, in between the, the centers of the grid cells using a continuous function, the resulting surface will be a smooth surface. And now, depending on the application, usually when you are working with the continuous data, you want to have the, the new uh, raster map also continuous when the original raster map is continuous. Very different situation for discrete data. In discrete data, for example, in this example, the numbers uh, mean type of geology. These are some category numbers. They are not uh, measured values. And as, as we have already described for the discrete data, they are the same within the area and they sharply change along the borderline where the area changes from one type to another type. So for that kind of, uh, uh, that kind of data, nearest neighbor is highly appropriate because we don't really want to a smooth change between these two classes. And that's what happen, happens if you apply interpolation. The change between these two classes becomes smooth, but you are generating numbers that don't exist uh, uh, as, cla as geological classes. For example, 340, there is no, three four, no 340 class or no 564 class. So you can't really use interpolation to resample, uh, to resample raster data. Here it is in a little bit more detail, and I will have you to look at this, uh, uh, look at this transformation by your, uh, transformations by yourself, where you can see that with the nearest neighbor, the, the values are just assigned to the higher resolution cells, while for the interpolation, the values, here is the original value, here is the original value, and the values in between are interpolated using a continuous function, either by linear method, by cubic, or spline. And we will talk about these interpolation methods later. Here is the, the ge our geology example. Again, you can see that the resampling is highly, uh, with nearest neighbor, is what is appropriate, that we really need to have this sharp change between those two classes. And that if you are doing if you are doing it with interpolation, you are generating practically a nonsense. Uh, it can get pretty complicated, and again, I will let you to study these examples by yourself. The main reason I have included this uh, this example is to point out that uh, depending on what the original resolution and target resolution is, you can get a change in area. For example, you are computing area for, for these different geological maps. If you resample your data, you can see that in this example, this part actually increases the uh, area of the class 910 and decreases the area of 262. So this area will be smaller, this area will be larger. And this just shows some of the rules that are used for decreasing raster resolution. And again, uh, again the, the procedure for continuous data and for discrete data. And now we will move on to vector data model.